What's up everybody, it's Mark again and welcome back to Swamp and Stomp. So today we're going to be talking about boots. Um, and you might be wondering why the heck are we going to talk about boots? Well, I recently had to get a new pair of boots and I was looking for something specific. When it comes to Florida, I've kind of got my thing figured out. But when I'm hunting out of state, I need something that's going to keep my feet warm. So I was looking for an insulated pair of waterproof, you know, knee high boots uh, that I was going to be able to uh, hunt in colder weather and potentially walk through some colder swamps. Um, so I've got two budget options. I tried them both out and I'm going to tell you what I thought about them. Dude, that is a big deer. And he didn't even go 30 yards. Oh my God. <laughs> that was the first buck I've ever shot. Woo, what a rush. Money. That deer is dead. Tagged out, baby. <laughs> you shot one? Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. I saw him go what? down. So we've got two options here. First, we've got the Tidewee. Honestly, I don't remember the exact uh, what they call this model, but these are snake proof, five millimeter neoprene insulated boots, and they run about 85 bucks. Uh, so relatively budget option. And then I've got another pair of uh, similarly priced boots. These are by a company called CalCal. Now, both of these companies have something in common. Uh, these are generally boots that are uh, manufactured overseas and they're uh, marketed here in the States by a US company. But both of them, five millimeter neoprene and they have some similar features and then they have some features that are a little bit different. So if you're in the market for a budget insulated boot, whether you know you just don't wanna spend a lot of money on your, your hunting gear or whether you're just like me, you live in a warmer place, you don't generally need them, but you just want them for you know short trips going out of state, then this video might be a little bit helpful for you. So first things first, I just wanna talk about the boots that I typically use in Florida. You know, I'll tend to spend a little bit more money on boots that I'm using sort of day in, day out. So um, in early season, when I'm deer hunting a lot, going up in the, um, into my saddle, I like to use this setup right here. So these are uh, Merrill uh, Moab 2s or Moab 3s. And these are the ventilators. Um, that's an important distinction because these boots are not waterproof, which means that whenever water gets into them, it'll just run out the sides right here above the sole. You know, when I know I'm gonna be going deeper than my, my waterproof boot will keep water out, I just wear these. And then to keep the, um, you know, the mud and, uh, and all, all the thorns and stuff from scratching me up and, um, you know, messing me up, I use, these knee-high gaiters. Uh, these ones right here are outdoor research. These are actually a little bit more expensive. I wanna say these run about 40 bucks, but you can get some cheap ones on Amazon. And I've really come to like using these gaiters with some uh, just above the ankle high, like hiking boots. I find they give me more ankle support. So when I'm hiking, you know, this is the way to go. Or when I'm climbing up a tree to saddle hunt, I really like to wear these. They're just more comfortable. Now, if I am gonna be uh, you know, going in shallow water and I know that I'm not going to be going deep um, and I know that I can keep my, my feet dry, um, then I like to use these uh, lacrosse, lagrange boots, the uninsulated ones. But of course, because they are uninsulated, biggest problem I run into with these is that if I were to go up north, like I went to Tennessee this year, these are not going to keep my feet warm and that's going to be a major problem. So because these are the boots I usually use, I was in search of some insulated boots. So I started looking at budget options because frankly, I'm only going to use these, you know, a couple, a couple weeks tops a year. Um, you know, some of the colder months uh, in Florida, or if I go up to the panhandle to visit my wife's um, family or when I go out of state. So um, when I went to Tennessee, I used, these boots right here. These are the Tidewee boots and these are snake proof. And you can tell they're snake proof by this panel right here. This is like a, like it's, it's hard. Like it's very stiff. The whole boot is relatively stiff because of this snake proof aspect. But you know, I didn't have any, uh, 
any snake proof boots so i thought i would give them a try so so that's one boot and then the other boot are these cow cows now these kind of a different uh vibe here these are not snake proof um they're a much softer boot but they are also they're also five mil so first things first when we were in when i was in tennessee uh, you can actually watch all my hunts that i use these boots on um there was uh different situations where i didn't want to use these style boots and i wanted to use my hiking boots so if you watch the videos you'll notice on the first video when i'm hiking up a ridge i was using my hiking boots um, but then after that i started using these because they're just easy to use and they were insulated whereas my hiking boots were not and it started getting cold towards the end of the trip so i wore these while i was uh, sitting completely still on the ground uh, for hours um, and I think it got down uh, it didn't get super cold but it did get below freezing I think like 25 was the coldest that I experienced um, and my feet were warm I was fine um, I didn't have to put any uh, uh, hand warmers or anything in there even though I did have them with me just in case um, but these did everything that I needed um, one thing that I did notice is the stiffness of them makes them a little bit uncomfortable. You can see as you bend forward at the ankle, the material has a tendency to want to fold instead of just flexing. Um, and that's because there's reinforcement right here. So you would want it to kind of bend along these like ridges that it has, but it doesn't, it doesn't really do that. It kind of deforms as you um, bend your ankle. So that what that starts to do is that, that front there starts to kind of push against the top of your foot um, which can be a little bit uncomfortable so this is definitely not a boot that you want to use uh, when you're walking long distances but if you're just going to be getting up in a tree stand and sitting still um, then I think it's a great boot for that um, especially you know if you're not doing it super often um, it does have this little tightening feature on the back so that you can adjust it to your calf size. I do wish that it went a little bit further down because uh, me personally my calves stay thick um, pretty far down um, and I like that that's in the back because I, I found when you have it on the sides a lot of times when you're walking it'll like hit stuff or if it's on the inside it'll catch when your legs are passing each other if it's on the outside it'll catch on um, like brush and stuff like that uh, but all in all I thought it was a decent I'm not gonna say it was a great boot it was a decent boot for the money it was definitely a good purchase so if you're looking for a budget boot uh, snake boot this is probably your best bet. Now, if you're looking for something similar, maybe a little bit more comfortable, um, then I would take a look at this Cal Cal brand. Um, again, this was in that similar uh, price point. Uh, they definitely tried to make this like kind of stylish by adding some stuff on there. But look, this is already kind of starting to peel away. So not necessarily the highest quality, but they do look kind of cool if, if that's important to you. You know, the inside being orange, seems completely pointless like I don't know why that matters you can't see it anyway um, but uh, there's like some padding on the back here which I honestly I have no idea what that would even be for um, I, so I don't know but one thing that I could tell you about these boots I've been using them a lot around the garden just gardening in the yard and um, uh, I used them walking around in the panhandle um, I did a, a fair bit of like hiking around with these. Um, and one thing that is really noticeable compared to these Tideway boots is that these Cal Cal's are far more flexible. So when you bend, I mean, it's hard to show right now because there's no foot inside of there, but this, this material is very flexible. So it kind of conforms to the shape of your foot and your leg when you're walking in them. So you don't get that like that push on top here that you get with the snake boot uh, or the snake proof boot um, so it's a much more comfortable boot and once again five millimeter um, neoprene i gotta say though this one feels a little bit thinner than five mil millimeters um, so this one's definitely not going to keep you warm in really cold conditions um, but i think you know anything down to you know like 30 degrees you're going to be really comfortable uh, wearing this boot so if you don't care about snakes uh, and you want something a little bit more comfortable, I think this Cal Cal option um, is, is a great one. Um, so if you guys are interested in getting any of these boots, I'll put links in the description. Um, 
but either one of them is is a pretty good option if you're looking for something relatively cheap to uh, fill your needs for uh, you know short periods of time that you actually need an insulated boot so Hopefully you guys found that information helpful. Um, if you have any questions, just drop it down in the comments. Um, I've got a couple more reviews coming up. Tidewe sent me some other stuff, not just these boots. Uh, so there's gonna be a couple uh, Tidewe reviews coming up as well as some other gear that's been showing up over the past couple of months. So make sure that you're subscribed. There's gonna be a bunch of other hunting tips and reviews coming up. So we'll catch you guys on the next video.